Hello everyone, Code Queen Nayeli. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Wix code to perform a few uh, really nice animation design effects by using some buttons and a slideshow, kind of like this. Very nice, right? This example is displaying staff and team members. You can use your creativity and use the slideshow to display anything else. Uh, products, maybe you're renting some houses and things like that. Uh, these are individual buttons for the individual names of these people. But I also have some other buttons at the bottom to show you a different way. Maybe you want just a previous and next, and these buttons do that as well. If this is your first time coding, it is completely fine. This video is for you too. Don't worry if you can't see the screen. If you're watching the video on your desktop, on your computer, if you look at the description of any of my videos, you will see a button that says show more. Click on that so it can expand and give you more information. These are the links that you need to use, depending which video you're watching, to access either the articles or the tutorial side or the codes, whatever it is that's relevant to that specific video, it will be in the description. So click on that. That way you can follow along while you have those different articles and tabs open. All right, let's go back. So this is the live site. On this site, I have the example here, which you can actually play around with it so you can test it out yourself. Then I explain step by step everything that you need to do to accomplish exactly this. It doesn't have to look this way. This is just the way that I designed it. So first, you're going to prepare your elements. For example, the slideshow by clicking on the menu. So inside of your Wix editor, you're going to click on the little plus sign. Look for interactive. Under this section, you will find the box slideshows. There are some more slideshows at the top. They're full width. If you want to use those, you can go ahead and select those. But for this tutorial, I'm using the box slideshows. They're a lot smaller. Then, after you select your slideshow, design it any way you like. Click on it, delete the slides that are already there, Start from scratch with a white, clean slate. You can add new slides. You can duplicate ones that you've already made. You can manage them here. Change the slide background and go through all the settings. After you're done designing your slideshow, then you can add the buttons. Now remember, I showed you two different sets of buttons. This set, which are individual for every single slide, that I have in this slideshow and the previous and next button. So figure out what your setup is going to look like and then add the relevant buttons. How do you add the buttons? Go to the plus sign, find button, and add any button that you want. And do the same thing. Design and style it the way that you'd like. Change the text, manage the font size, align it any way you want. I did a previous and next. I actually aligned this button to the right and this button to the left. That way they could be closer to each other. And then I just added a little line here. So I just showed you how to add the slideshow and the buttons. Of course, you can add other elements as well, like a picture or maybe another box with some text, a title, an image, anything that you want. So continue the design by adding the other elements. But to perform this design animation, you at least need the slideshow and the buttons. Now that you've already prepared those two, we can go ahead and turn on the developer tools. So at the top, look for the word code and turn them on. Now you're gonna start coding. If this is your first time, don't worry. I promise it's easy. After you turn on the developer tools, you're going to go to the tools menu 
and then find the Properties panel. Make sure that this is turned on. Go ahead and click that check mark. Now that we've turned on the Properties panel, we have to go back and each element that we added, the buttons, the slideshow, all of those are really important and we want to rename them. Right now, if you click on any of those buttons, it'll have a name like dollar sign, dollar sign. <laughs> it'll have a name like hashtag button one, button two, button three, and so on. So we want to click on the button and then you're going to see this properties panel pop up. Here under ID, you're going to type in whatever other name you want. You want to change it, at least I recommend you do, because it'll be easier to identify at the bottom of the page where the code is being added. If we didn't change the names of the buttons, then we wouldn't know what button belongs to which slide. This button, I named it Jason Button with a capital B. It's important to remember capitalization of every single letter because it has to be written exactly the same in the code as well. So go through every single button and label it the way that you want. Then, on every button, again, after you've labeled it and renamed it, you're going to hover over the events. Towards the bottom, you're going to see one that says on click. Click on that little plus sign. Some words will automatically appear here. You can change those words if you want to, but you don't have to. The default is good. It will look something like this after you click out of the box or press enter on your keyboard. So now that I have my next button, the on click event says next button click. So when they click on this button, something's going to happen. Now we're ready to code. Let's go to the code page. In the code, it's very simple to do. It's basically one line of code per button. That's all you need. You will write it under the ready code. The ready code is found at the bottom of your page. And then under each little button, depending on the way that you designed it, for example, these four represent my first four buttons, the individual buttons for the individual people, which was Julie, Susan, Mike, and Jason. For Julie, since she was in the first position or the very first slide, the code that I'm going to be writing in for her is dollar sign W, open parentheses, quotation marks, it could be one or two, it doesn't matter, slideshow one, because that is the name of my slideshow. If you noticed, the slideshow, when you click on it, it also has a hashtag name, just like your buttons. So you can either leave it the way it is, which will probably be slideshow one, or you can change it to something else. Either way, again, it has to match your code. Then, dot, change slide with a capital S, open close parentheses with the number zero. Because Julie's slide is in the first position, so this one's going to be zero, and then the next one is going to be one. The exact same code, depending on how many slides you have, that's how many numbers you're going to keep adding. Never start with the number one, always start with the number zero. If you have these, and that's all you designed, the individual buttons for each individual slide, then you're done. There's nothing else to add. If you only have the previous and next button, then this is all you need, the bottom two. If you have individual and you have the previous and next button, well then you need to follow the entire format. It's just an example. You can have more or less buttons, depends on you. But it'll be the same thing. For the previous button, it'll be slideshow one dot previous, open close parentheses with nothing inside. And for the next button, it'll be slideshow dot next. That's it. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> well, now let me go into the editor to show you where this magical code goes. If you haven't coded before, keep watching. If you have, go into the editor and start playing with your code to see if it works for you. Now, at the bottom of the page, there's a little tiny arrow. Click on it. It says open. 
and this is where you're going to start typing in your code. These little lines of code that says export function Julie button click, this automatically gets added to the bottom of your page every single time you click the event inside of the properties panel for that button. So you don't have to type that out. All you have to do is fill in the blank here in between the top line and the last line, little curly bracket that ends the statement basically. And that is where you're going to add your change slide code. That's all you need to know. Told you it'd be easy. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. There's a button at the very top corner. Join my Facebook. Click on community. It'll take you to the Facebook Wix code group. It's a wonderful community filled up with Wix users, Wix coders, and even some Wix developers. You need to stop by and say hi. Click on this button, the article. It'll take you directly to the article where they have a completely different example because they use the slideshow interaction by creating a multi-stage form. You should play around with that example too. Click on the API button. This API list will give you the exact pieces of code that you need to type it into your code page for any specific thing. For example, this is the exact code for slideshows. So that is where I got that code from. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. Bye.